Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. It's a little bit of a different one, but it's going to be a great one. You notice that the uh, insane asylum is run by the inmates. <laughs> Community the insane takeover, asylum. everyone. All right. I have some really cool good news to share with you guys. I know the past trends of the, the weeks have been what's going on in Jacksonville, like what's going on downtown. How do you residents feel about it? How do investors feel about it? Why you should get in um, investing in Jacksonville now and not wait? Well, after three years, construction has started on the Riverfront Plaza, formerly known as The Landing, which was a really cool place with shops and restaurants, and they did free country music festivals, all of that fun stuff. It was torn down to rebuild what is now going to be the Riverfront, Riverfront Plaza, parks, all that fun stuff. So after three years, ground has been broken and construction has started. So it begins with a redesign of the of Independent Drive. When it's completed, the project is set to have amenities such as a park, gardens, outside dining, all of that stuff. It's going to be a really cool family-oriented place. And then fingers crossed this Jags Stadium deal goes through, and it's just something else to add on to what to do downtown. So that's awesome, Madison. Thank you for sharing good news with us. That's great news. Absolutely. It's awesome. Oh my gosh, look at this community coming together. Okay, Lee. Are you so ready? the inmates obviously have uh, started taking over the asylum, as everybody noticed. And we don't have Pablo and we don't have Greg, and we still have Madison. That's great. So I'd like to introduce everybody to. Jen Dolzen, as you all might know, is a fairy godmother of the show, and I want her to introduce herself to you. Well, thank you, Lee. Thank you. I, former Jacksonville resident, born and raised in Jacksonville, moved to California 30 years ago, but I still go back visiting frequently. My mother, Lydia Filzen, is on the line, so she's here. And so that is how I have been able to do what I do because I go back and forth to Jacksonville frequently and they just can't get rid of me. So that's how I am part of the community. But I did start working with JWB back in 2012 at the bottom of the market of the Great Recession. And we bought our first house for $83,000, four bedroom, two bath. And it's making some good money right now. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> and Lee Bishop, of course, is the driver of the ship. He is the MVP. Tell us about yourself, Lee. Oh my God. Hello, everybody. Good to be here. We're certainly not filling the shoes of uh, Greg and Pablo in this, but we're going to give it our best shot, trying to get some information, trying to have some fun and make it fun for everybody. So I got to know JWB in 2019. So Jen's way ahead of me on that queue, but I purchased the first five houses in 2019. And in February, we went down to meet everybody. And we, I met Greg and Pablo down there in the February where we got to see our houses. So we got to sit, meet some people from JWB team. And I jumped on almost right away as soon as they started doing the show. And I think I was the first guest that they actually had on the show. So that's kind of how I got to be the MVP of the show. And that people were asking, how do you, why can't I be the MVP? I, I, you know, why are you the MVP? So it's been a fun ride, and I've learned a lot and from these guys, day in, day out. You know, they're always informative, and they're fun to be hanging around with. And they're they're truly what you see is what you get. These are these kind of guys, and as you can see, that's how Jen is. That's how I am. We're approachable. We're lovable. I'm gonna say that. And without any further ado, we're gonna thanks to everybody putting their nicknames in the chat box we're gonna do try to do the roll call roll call so the mother of the fairy god show is like the first one in the chat i love that jen fills i mean now uh, lydia fills <laughs> and then we have ruben who is in the house didn't put it Welcome. in i guess this is his first time first time, uh, first time? we have nadine shaw is in the house he says, good morning, good afternoon, JWB family. Hope all everybody's doing well. We have Dean Curry, the early bird in the house. Yes, Dean. And then we have Jay Cohen. Everybody call the big papa because he's daddy to Greg. We love to see Jay in the house. And we have Michael Santarinas. Hello, everybody, he says. Good to see you, Michael. 
And we have Jersey checking in from Not Your Average Investor Show. Is that Hervé in Jersey? That's Pedro Nasiento. Oh, it's Pedro. Oh. Hi, Pedro. <laughs> See? We don't have all this stuff memorized. So you got to like, Pedro, come on. Identify yourself, sweetie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, help a brother out. <laughs> uh, we got Jeff from New Orleans. He says hello to the community. And we have Andy, the AJ Norris. We have Anthony Dennis, who everybody knows as Tony D. Tony D. Beautiful to see him in the house. Tamara Gameson. I think she says she's game time. Team game time. Tammy That's team beautiful. game time. Colorado Springs. Nice. And we have Andy Norris. I love it. Chris Gonzaga from the Hudson Valley. And we have Robert Wiesner hey, from Bob. Georgia. We have uh, Marilyn Conman in the house. Home of the manatees. Home of, home of the manatees. There you go. You nailed that. We have Kelly Brennenbaum. Yes. And she, all right. We got Bill Shields with his Buenos Aires Amigos. How you doing, Bill? Love to see you here. And we have Dave in the house, who is a not your average investor signing on there. He just said Dave. And we have Maria Totino, West Palm Beach. Welcome, Maria. Maria. I love it. I love it. And then we have Ethan. We have Danette Colvin says from Baltimore, Maryland, another Baltimore person. How about that? I thought that was unique. I love it. Ethan Gow. Yes. Welcome, welcome, Ethan. How do you New Jersey? The other Greg. (laughs) Eddie Harris in the house. From Hotlanta. That's what he likes to say, Atlanta. And then we have Nikita Wynn Stapleton. Welcome. What? I love that beautiful oh. name, Nikita Wynn Stapleton. I used to live on Stapleton Court back in the day. And Danette says that her nickname is Danny. Yes. Hi, so. Danny. So Danny. happy to see you here. Hello. And we have Carolyn Moline in the house. You know who they are. We salute the, the first family in the house. The Moline. Moline. Yeah, we salute you. Aaron Wilson. Hi. Aaron Wilson. Leslie Wilson from Our Denver. Denver friends. Yes, she's a real estate maven. Oh my gosh, B from Pittsburgh is here. <gasps> now Marilyn B is here. B Harris. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Hi, B and Bill. We met with you guys back in when we had our meetup in Pittsburgh. Oh, so good to see you guys here. Then Kathleen from, from California. Welcome, welcome. And Leroy from, Leroy from Connecticut. Connecticut. Dang, this is awesome. This is so, oh my gosh, look at this party that's going on. Okay, Lee, we've got lots to talk about, shall we? Senior Lee. We do. We do have lots to talk about today. One of it is going to be about the financing because we were talking, we were seeing a lot of a lot of things going in uh, the chat and people were wondering about why do we have to use the JWB vendors and, and all that. And so a lot of questions focused on that thing. But the reason why people have to use or or JWB wants you to use their lenders is because you have a better experience. It's all about the experience. They have vetted these people and they know who you need to use to get the best deals and they give you the options. I mean, even when I was doing my non-recourse lending, I had three people that I could, you know, use and it was up to me which which option I wanted to choose for that, which I thought was pretty cool. But a lot of people don't know that after they get in with the lender, that they can refinance their house after a year or two. And I wanted people to be aware that that you know if you're comfortable with a lender that you use all the time, you can after a year or two, you have built up enough equity in the house that you could probably refinance and get some cash out. Like we were talking about the ringleader last week was saying, you know, ways that he was doing that. And it's always a good idea. I love, I love the people to come on the show and share their experience and share their knowledge and let you know that there are more than one way to skin a cat. So you have to use JWB group at first. I don't know who you use, Jen, or when you got the non-recourse loan, did they give you an option of different so- ones or? So whenever I need money, I pretty much call it, well, actually, I usually start with having some down payment, but, but yeah, I do remember in 2017, I refinanced property number one, so I could get enough of a down payment for property number two, but that is the only refinancing I've done at this time. And now I actually, I remembered way back, hold on, I have to like find it, but I have from Denny Davies, 
a strategy. In fact, I'll read it out to you. And he said this in the chat. This is like way back, but Denny, it, it hit me so hard. I went ahead and I saved it because you've inspired me, buddy. He wrote, I have refinanced nine of my 12 financed JWB properties and used the refinance money to make an additional 28,000 per year cash flow by private lending that money back to JWP. That's after paying for the additional mortgage interest and federal taxes on the private lending. And this is aside from purchasing two additional JWB properties in 2022. It's literally investment cash rolling into investment cash, rolling into investment cash. The exponential growth in various aspects of our net worth has been ridiculous, all because of JWB. So brother, I saved that in the chat. I took a screenshot because I wanted that to be my inspiration. And so my question for you, Lee, is, okay, I've got seven properties now. Now, granted, five of those properties I've only had within the last couple of years. So I don't know if they've marinated enough to have enough equity, but with the interest rates the way they are and the way things are going, is now a good time to refinance? What is your opinion on that? As Greg would say, it depends. Everything is, a, it depends, right? Because if you see equity has built up in those homes in, in a year or two, right? Especially in the last two years, it's probably enough that you have the reserves to be able to handle how the cost of refinancing to make it justify how much cash flow you're going to come back with, right? So the overall picture is always going to be the bottom line is I want to pay this property off fast, right? And if I can do that by paying less and being able to put more on a principal, then refinancing might be a deal, but it might cost you twenty thousand dollars to buy them not buy that additional money, right? For each property or something, right? So it's a gut check, really. You know, you want to make sure that what you're doing makes sense to you. My wife said to me just last night, well, you're a money broker. Why didn't you refinance the house? And I said, well, I just did refinance with other non-recourse loans because I can't just go to my guys, my connections and say, hey, would you guys lend me money in my retirement account? Right? They're going to say, eh, we don't do that. Not everybody does. There's only a handful across the country that do that. So JWB working with three of them is pretty impressive, you know, that they vetted these three guys to, to work with me and my refinance. And again, I had the choice. Who do I want to work with, right? Yeah. And it, it comes down to whether or not I want to pay the points and whether I want to pay the cash or I have a monthly bill of $15 a month on, you know, who I have. I mean, it. It all depends on how much it's affecting your bottom line and your cash flow and how much it's affecting your reserve. So if you can pay back, like I'm putting all of mine in the C3X, you know, routine where I'm, everything that's coming in is going to house property number two. So right now I only owe like $15,000 on that house. So do us a favor for those kids that haven't uh, always been here long enough to know what C3X is. Could you um, explain that one? Yeah, it's uh, a trickle down effect, a snowfall or waterfall, whatever you want to call it. So I have five houses, one of the houses I paid cash for. So that entire income from rent minus expenses will go toward house number two. And then house number two, they're all just house two, three, and four are all paying themselves. But the cash flow that I'm getting from all of those four houses is also going in to paying down house number two. So by the time you get done paying down house number two, you doubled what you could put down for total payment of the, you know, one, the third house. And then that house only takes a year or two to pay off. And then the last, and after that, if you have three houses, the fourth house only takes about six months to pay off. It, it really does exponentially grow when you're paying down the principal, putting extra money down on the principal. And any of the lenders that JW works with don't penalize you for that. Right. So C3X just makes sense, you know, for a lot of people to do that. Yeah, pay it off sooner and and use the assets that you're getting to to uh, grow more assets. It's wonderful. Now you were asking me how I've I've gotten these various loans. Pretty much, I just go to JWB and they set me up. Usually, I get a woman named Teresa Waters. 
in the chat just for fun how many people have been working with Teresa Waters not that she's the only person that they work with but she seems to be somebody that that we've, I've heard her name mentioned amongst other people multiple times but yeah she knows what she's doing and I'm not the money genius like you are Lee I'm the one that wants to sit at the feet of people like you in fact Let's celebrate you for a moment. I discovered how to get some money and that was taking it out of my IRAs. And so years ago, I had heard, you know, you can take your money out of your IRAs or your 401ks and you can do a self-directed IRA. And for my situation, I had a very, very good friend. She's still a very good friend who was my financial planner. And every time I told her, I want to pull my money out of the stock market and I want to put it in a real estate. She's like, oh, no, 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 no. That's not Making a, a mistake. <laughs> and so that went on for about three to five years. And I was just like, finally, I was just like, that's it. I had it because I had Lee in my back pocket. What I meant, what that means is I was like, I need help help me figure this thing out. He goes, okay, no problem. First thing you do, you know, for second thing you do is third thing you do. So he walked me through the whole thing. And Lee, I think that you should have a coaching business taking people through the process because it's just nice to know that you have somebody holding your hand. And I, I think that you are the most valuable player in our community because of that. But anyway, if, thanks to Lee, I took my money out. And I think I had like, 273,000 in my stocks that I had, you know, keep in mind, I'd started investing when I was 24. So it wasn't much, but it was something. So anyway, I ended up buying, I had two separate IRAs, a traditional and a Roth, and I had to keep them separate. So they are in separate silos from my other five houses. So one I paid in cash with the traditional IRA and I still have money left over to handle stuff. And then the second one, I had to do a 50% down because I didn't have enough to buy the whole thing outright and still have some cash to handle that. And then I've got the other five properties in my regular. Anyway, but the thing is, is that, yeah, we learn from each other, guys and gals. That's why we're here. And this is why this community is so amazing because I have grown exponentially thanks to this group. How about you, Lee? Have you grown yeah. exponentially? I mean, there's so many people that have a lot of smarts to come on this show and share their experience and share how they do things. And and that really does add to the value of, of coming here on two, two days a week. You know, I mean, it's, it, it's a lot of fun and, and it's informative and whether you want to believe it or not, you end up walking away with, with getting some knowledge, you know, and I like to, so, there have been like, I would every once in a while, I put my phone number out in the chat. And I have had people take advantage and call me and say, hey, I know you, you know, you were talking about this non-recourse lending. Can you talk to me about investing with my retirement account? And I have no problem, as you know, talking to anybody about that. I love talking because I get to know people, right? I mean, my job now is lending money to people. So I can't help them in this instance, but I I think that most of what you have to trust in is JWB and, and where they're going to teach you. And if they don't, like if Greg doesn't have time to tell you, I'm sure there, you know, you can do the chat with JWB, you know, and, and yeah. those guys really know the business. And I thought it was funny this last time when we had that IRL in uh, Jacksonville, everybody came down and got the tour and we got to see the, the downtown buildings and everything. One of the women that was in the office was teaching the staff about the non-recourse line of C3X and all that stuff using my numbers. And so she called me over and she's like, hey, can you can you make sure that these numbers are right and that these numbers are correct? Because I'm telling the group about your portfolio. And I was like, holy smokes, that's pretty cool. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I didn't that's know incredible. that was going on. <laughs> That is so incredible. And, and you know what? Speaking of speaking of JWB tours, we don't know when the next JWB tour is going to happen. We are we are eagerly awaiting that date and information. However, I do have breaking news. If you're anywhere near Monterey, California on August 12th, we're having a party right here. You get to see my office and living room right here on August 12th. So here's what we're doing. The very first 
meetup ever was me and Renee in Atlanta meeting up with Drew Barnhill. So that was the very first one. But the very second one was it was during Monterey Car Week 2021. And it was August. And I said, hey, let's have our very first Northern California meetup. So we were there and we hung out and it was during Monterey Car Week. And then the next year, 2022, we once again met, met up during Monterey Car Week. And we had a whole house full of people that time. So we had like seven people the first time. And then we had a whole house full the next time. So I think we had like, I don't know, 47 people here in my little 900 square foot apartment. Wow. Yeah, it was kind of fun, but we were having a blast. And so guess what? We're doing it again. So there is a tradition, Monterey Car Week. Come on, we'll go see some cars before we all meet up. And what I want you guys to do is just contact me. So Jennifer Filzen at gmail.com is my email address. I'll type it in. If you want to come, let me know. And we'll make sure that you have my address and all that fun stuff. But seriously, it is standing room only at my at my house, Dean. Yes, you're absolutely correct. But that's the beauty of it. We all are connecting. We're sharing food. I'll have pizza. I'll have chocolate tea because that tea that I had, it was, it's a it's a tea from Maui that is made out of the, the holes, the husks of the, the cacao. And I have chocolate tea and it was so popular. Like I had, I was constantly making chocolate tea. So I made sure that I have chocolate tea ready for everyone on August 12th. So come on, Lee, you want to fly to Monterey? Oh, come on, Lord. come on, baby. It's cracking. I'm not sure I can make that. We're going up to Michigan to see my son in a couple of weeks. We haven't seen the grandbabies in a while. So we're going to do that trip. But I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about the maintenance side of your new job is as uh, far as maintenance goes. And you're a resident expert on uh, all things maintenance and not maintenance, but, you know, as as a property manager. I'm learning. I'm learning. I think it's pretty cool. Did you get a chance to read the contract yet? Okay, so 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 there's for those who have no idea what Lee's talking about, let's talk about because I'm bad one. I <laughs> let me just say this I cannot sit still, I have to do multiple things at once. And yes, people were, were commenting, yes, yes, I try, I try to play the bass and I try to play guitar, uh, the, the drums, but right now I'm focusing on writing my newest book and I'm also doing property management. So, so property management, what the heck? So, Lee, this is another really cool thing, breaking news. I was looking at my appreciation journal, which I write in every single night. So if you guys are wondering, like, why is she always like, so this way, I, I'm right. very much in the in the mindset of appreciation and abundance mentality, and putting putting positive energy forward. So every single night in my journal, I write about three things. One, I write five things I appreciate that happened today. I also write down any money miracles And then the next thing I write down is what do I want to do next? Like, what is my next action item? Sometimes I say, get more sleep or whatever, but I'm always focusing on these things. Well, I was reviewing my appreciation journal and I was wondering what I was doing a year ago today. A year ago today, Lee, I was taking my California real estate license exam. Wow. That's awesome. Here I am a year later, one year later, I am working as an agent under the, the top property management broker in the Monterey Peninsula, Pacific Grove Property Management with 150 doors. They're nowhere near the size of Mon- of uh, JWB, but they are, they are higher end properties. And so, yeah, I'm managing three properties. So I'm so obsessed about real estate that I am a property owner with Renee. We have seven properties, right? My mother's into it. She's got her five properties. We got grandma into it. She's passed, but grandma invested. And then also I'm a renter. So so for newsflash, yes, we live in Monterey, but I've been renting this 900, foot, 900 square foot apartment for 16 years, since 2007. And wow. I love it. Anyway, so the thing is, is that I wanted to see what was on the other side. What is the property management side? Because Leslie Wilson, when we were staying with her in Denver, she gave me some really great advice. So shout out to Leslie. She said to me, and Leslie, you can clarify if I've got this wrong. She said, even when you retire, always have some little job where you have some income coming in, a little W-9 job. And the reason for that, Leslie was telling me that she worked as a barista at Starbucks. 
And she said the reason for the holding on to that little job is so you can still invest. So when you're still qualifying for loans to purchase new investment properties, you've got that income coming in. So thanks to Leslie Wilson, my, my little real estate maven, a big sister that I want to be when I grow up, I have a plan. So I have a marketing agency. That's what pays my bills. But I plan on having my own uh, rental property management company within about five to 10 years. And that will be the retirement income that's residual income as I hopefully and eventually retire. So yay, Leslie, I got it. Okay, I got it correct. So this community is what has allowed me to accelerate what I'm doing with JWB. So truly, I love you guys. Okay, so maintenance. <laughs> I want to talk about maintenance a little bit because now that I am seeing literally all three viewpoints as a tenant, as a property owner, and as a property manager, may we just take a moment to show appreciation and gratitude for our portfolio managers and how hard they work. Because now that I'm in this role, holy crap, Lee, it's a lot. I knew it was a lot when they separated the roles of the maintenance to the manager, to the portfolio. Like they separated that role in JWB. So, you know, what they were doing beforehand, before they switched and said, I'm going to take care of the maintenance. I'm going to take care of the people. So I'm going to take, you know, when they started splitting it out, you knew it was a lot of work that they were doing just for us. You know? Okay. I have learned so much. Okay. First off, I even have some, I even have some talking points. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So. There's the JWB standard of maintenance versus, let's just say my standard working for Pacific Grove <laughs> Property Management. Okay, I'm just gonna, and then there's, and then there's the standard of the the do it yourself or landlord. Okay, so like there's three standards, right? Okay, so let's go with the JWB standard of maintenance. So first off, most of the time before a tenant moves in, the property has been remodeled. So it's either a new property that's been freshly built, yay, for those tenants moving into a brand new house. How sexy is that, right? Nothing's going to break down in that thing, right? Right. Or like the seven properties that we own, they're all older homes, all remodels. So, you know, they've, and then there's the occasional time where the tenant hasn't moved out yet and it still needs to be remodeled, but at least it's on par and on schedule to be remodeled. So there's that JWB standard. So you know that everything's going to be working when the tenant moves in or soon will be right and there's there's that guarantee feeling right then right. there is what pacific grove property management does and these are higher end homes not that they're really that fancy but because they're here on the monterey peninsula their rent is going from like the cheapest house that i'm i'm managing right now is thirty eight hundred dollars per month wow. and the uh the higher end one that i'm that's actually getting a new tenant this saturday is uh forty nine hundred dollars per month wow yeah so, you know, Monterey Pacific growth. I mean, so right. anyway, but, but the thing is, is that none of these are standardized in their maintenance because they're all owned by different owners. They're all totally different types of properties, all different. They're not, they're not going through a standard. So for example, in a condo that I'm managing, I have to get approval for replacing a screen door. And it's only about 150 bucks, but I still have to like go through this whole thing. So the fact that JWB has their own maintenance team handling that versus having to outsource to different subcontractors like I do through PGPM, then it's just a different feel. Is it difficult? No, but it is a lot more babysitting. And I'm not going to lie. I have to babysit the vendors right. because like sometimes they're not really great about being good business people and they forget to send me an invoice. And then they're like, well, Jen, you haven't paid me on this. I'm like, well, I haven't received your invoice. And then he sends me a screenshot of his invoice on his phone. Dude, that doesn't translate well into my software. I need, I need to actually like send me your invoice. Don't send me a screenshot on the phone. That's not like, anyway, yeah. <laughs> so, and then and then here's another aspect that I just learned the other day and I was thoroughly shocked. Okay. Have you, you know how people have been talking about like, what's better to make more money? Is it long-term rentals or short-term rentals, Airbnb types? Well, here on the Monterey Peninsula, we've got three types of rentals, if you will. There's, there's the long-term, obviously, you know, right. I'm a long-term 16 years here. Yes. Right. We're right. used to that. But here in our peninsula, we have 
we have rules and laws around vacation rentals because when Airbnb was allowing people to come in for two or three days and then leave, a lot of the city residents, they were like, uh-uh, we're voting, this This is not happening. Here's Here are the new rules. For certain sections of Pacific Grove, they have to rent for 30 days minimum or more. So it has to be a 30 day rental. So that kind of limits things. There are sections of Pacific Grove and Monterey that have a permit and they can do Airbnb. They are in certain locations, but there's a lot more work to the Airbnb side of things. And here is a really shock, is the shocker. When you are renting longer term, the tenants tend to be nicer and asking for things like appreciative and, and asking permission for things. When it's an Airbnb, people have an entitlement mentality and they will often wreck the, the place. There is a property. Thank God I'm not managing this one, but it's a beautiful property. This property is located just one block away from the water. It's on, it's called Mermaid Crossing. It's on Mermaid Lane. This property is so cherry. It is beautiful. It rents out for $500 a night. There was a recent tenant that literally vomited and shat on the bed before they left and did not clean it up. And they expected, and they did something also horrendous. But the fact that they destroyed the bed with, yeah, that's what we have to Mark? deal with. So I'm going to vote. Yeah, just be warned. Airbnb rentals can be more money, but they're a lot more work and they're a big pain in the butt. So there's my take. Thank you for my TED talk on maintenance. So much derby. Jesus. Anyway, gross. so I, I was talking to you about the JWB contract that they have with the tenants and I was impressed. Like I asked the uh, portfolio manager to send me a blank one so I could kind of see what they were doing or what, what was in there because I never, I never looked, I never, I never watched it. And, and I read it. And a lot of the things that were in there that were pretty cool were like the, the, the washing machine or the refrigerator and microwave. I'm not sure whatever, you know, utilities that they put in there. They say, if it breaks, it was put in there as a convenience, not like it would be in there forever. So if, it, if they needed a new one, they needed to replace it. And uh -huh. if they like the other thing was a work order that came in for one of my houses, the uh, group called me and said, Hey, you need water treatment in one of your houses. And I knew that water, water street, water treatment on water street. Great. So they said, here's three choices that you can use. And we recommend a, but you can go with anyone you want. And I said, well, you recommend a, I'm going to go with a, and they did it and and I said, did anybody follow up to find out? And they said, well, if you don't hear anything, it's good news. You know, and I'm like, okay, that's great. So, but I like that JWB gave me the option of choosing between three different people, you know, mm -hmm. saying, hey, you can use these three contractors that we have and they're all great, but we recommend this. And I mean, as far as I'm concerned, if they have a recommendation, that's what I'm going to go with. But they gave me the choice. And then it was up to me. It wasn't about money. It was about who they thought was the best one to do it, which I thought was cool. Have you had any work done to any of your houses, your seven houses? Yes, I have. And in fact, Miss Muffet Lane, she was coming up, my attendant was coming up for a renewal and she had indicated that she would like to replace the carpet. And so Sarah contacted me asking me, you know, if, if I wanted to do that. And I said, sure, no problem. And then there was also like an, an option for me to do LVP. What does that stand for? It's the fake wood. Propane or something? It's, yeah, it's like, it looks like hardwood, but it's not. Luxury vinyl. Oh, oh thank yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Luxury vinyl yeah. plank. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, community. I love you guys. Anyway, so I said, so, but the, the LVP was going to cost twice. So it was going to be like 6,000 versus 3,000. And I okay. said, they said, what do you want to do? I said, well, let's ask her. What does she want? And the, the resident was so excited that I gave her the option. She's wow. like, well, I'll take, I'll take whatever, but I'd really love the LVP because why it's less maintenance for her. She, you know, it's a lot easier to clean 
LVP than it is carpet. And so I was like, all right, give her what she wants. She's already been with me for eight years. Of course, of course, right. make her happy. And just another little side thing that I tend to do, like, this is just me, but like, I love doing this. When I have a new tenant moving into one of our properties, I love to send them a bouquet of flowers, welcoming to their, welcoming them to their new home. You're over the top, girl. You're I am over the top, but guess what? That breeds loyalty and they stick around forever. Like a tenant that's been with me for eight years. Yes, please. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's something I have. I have had one term in the five houses since 2019 and I was, I've been thrilled with what they're doing. And I love that they ask me, you know, well, this is what the new price is going to be. But do you want to offer them something less if they'll stay? And I said, well, if they offer them a two year, you know, offer to stay longer than a year, give them this deal, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I want them to stay there knowing that they're going to be paying because I'm not greedy. You know, right. I'm, I'm looking to make a profit, which I'm already making a profit on those houses just by refinancing, you know, on right. each one. So before it gets too long in, I want to take time to look to, let's look at the history of Jacksonville. Oh. And I know you have some, uh, a wonderful audience member uh, that <laughs> might have some information <laughs> there with you. So, okay. All right. We'll get into the history of Jacksonville, but also to rem Madison reminded us we have Q and A's to also answer. So, so are you, okay. Are you guys want us to get to the Q and A's to the, at the end? You want us to do that at the end? And then we go into the history of Jacksonville right now. Is that cool? Uh, all right. Let's, let's do the history of Jacksonville real quick. And then I promise we'll get to the Q and A's. Okay. History first, history first. All right. We have my mother, Lydia Filson. My mother is an author and she's written several historical fiction novels and two of which are Exiles on the St. John's and Raiders on the St. John's. That's her, that's her two-part series of Civil War history in Jacksonville. And it's fascinating. And St. Augustine too. So check that out. Anyway, so here are some interesting trivia. What was the original name of Jacksonville? Calford. Yes, mother. It was Calford. Wow. Truly, Jacksonville was a true cow town. Yes, it was. And why was it called Calford? Well, they had to ford the river with the cows. Yes, it's true. I know, I know, Lydia shouldn't be allowed to answer. I know, local uh, advantages there. Okay, uh, question number two. What is the largest city by landmass in the United States with 840 square miles? Yes, Nadine, Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Do -do 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 -do. Ding, 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 ding. Very good. Okay, question number three. What is the most populous city in the state of Florida? The most populous city in the state of Florida is, you guessed it, Jacksonville. I gotta say Jacksonville for everything. <laughs> Duval, right? Okay, and then I don't know if anybody would get this because I think other landmarks are eclipsing this, but according to, well, let's just see what, let's just see what people comes up with. What is the most recognizable landmark in Jacksonville? If you can, what is the most recognizable landmark in Jacksonville? I would not have gotten this right, but I would have said the Independent Life Building, which is now the Wells Fargo Building. Oh, okay, St. John's River. That's a really impressive geological. Yes, that technically, the monorail, LOL. Yes, that's hilarious. Lee, do you have any history bits that you would want to share? I don't know enough about Jacksonville. I just, in fact, if it hadn't have been for fortune builders telling me your asset protection and all that stuff, they did a, a, a thing saying, hey, you can do this investment, re, you know, right. uh, property investments and, and things. And and I said, cool, what's that about? Let me get yeah. into that. Yeah, and you then, wouldn't even and know that. About JWB, and I was right. like, hey, there was only a couple that they were endorsing. And JWB was the nicest one that I found. So that was pretty cool. It was easy to make that choice, you know. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And it, it is kind of cool, you know, being from there and having that hometown advantage of like, yeah, I've seen Jacksonville go from being kind of a backwater. In fact, Jacksonville was only really known by people in the Navy, right? Because there's Mayport there and there's NAS Jacks, Naval Air Station, Jacksonville. Orange Park was where I grew, you know, I was born in Arlington. And then when I was three, we moved to Orange Park because at the time Clay County schools were the best schools. And now a lot of people are moving to St. John's County, the St. Augustine area, because those are where the cool schools are. But Jacksonville is truly coming into its own. And it's exciting to see how it's gone from kind of a backwater 
to like this really exciting place. So I'm excited, guys. I'm excited so much to own properties in Westside and Arlington and downtown because those are the areas that are just going to skyrocket when Jacksonville becomes the next Nashville, the next Miami like the next Charlotte, that's so exciting. It's so exciting. Well, I know all the, all those things they were talking about with uh, that are going to be doing the improvements and how much all that stuff is, I think is really going to make my houses that much more valuable. All of our houses that much more valuable when it comes time to where you buy and hold it 20 years or I turn it over to my kids. It's, I can see these houses being like $750,000 when, you know, right. What, look what happened in Nashville, right? I think that Jacksonville was like the next. I was talking to an investor that was saying, oh, why do you invest all you put all your money in, one, you know, all your eggs in one basket? And I was like, you know, as far as I'm concerned, where I am more comfortable with my retirement money is in this return, you know, the total return on investment from JWB and their cash flow, you know, the houses, the housing income and all that. I'm just impressed with them. It's exciting stuff. Shall we get to the Q and A's? Yeah. Okay. I, cool. I think Thomas is telling me what were the three locations in Jacksonville mentioned: West Side, Downtown, North Side, and Arlington. Arlington. Yeah. So Thomas, welcome. So you'll find that JWB has built new rental properties and remodeled several rental properties throughout Jacksonville. But, you know, Jacksonville being the largest landmass in the United States of city, it is the biggest mm -hmm. city in the United States. It's just massive. And so West Side would be like a normal full on city anywhere else. Uh, like it would be like, you know, but but it's just a section of town and Arlington is a section of town, north side, south side. And then you've got the, you know, the other little areas like Orange Park and Normandy. And there's just so many different districts because Jacksonville is so massive. So a lot of the neighborhoods are located within approximately 20 minute drive to downtown. So all of these neighborhoods, Arlington, west side, downtown, they are all within striking distance of the booming downtown that is taking place. So Jacksonville is awesome. And JWB has been doing this since what, 2006 is when they got the guys started with their first 40 properties. Uh, thanks to Big Papa Cohen giving Greg a loan. Thank you, Big Papa. They didn't, Greg, Greg said that he didn't start doing selling these homes until like 2009, 2010. Right, right. So, so anyway, that's how they got their start. But anyway, it's it's good stuff. Okay, so I've got we've got a we've got a question from Tara Paget. We may have already answered this, but let's just go ahead and have you talk about it, Lee. Help me understand the benefit of C3X to pay the homes off. Why not keep them leveraged and use the cash flow to acquire more properties? Yeah, that's a good I, I strategy mean, too. It just depends on what you need to do. Right, right. I I I kind of texted that in the in the answer in the in the um, oh. chat. But what it really depends on is what your bottom line is, what your ultimate goal is. If you're 30 years old, let's say don't refinance, just let it run. But if you're 60 like me and you want to be collecting that income as a as a retirement buffer, you want to do the C3 edge pay down and, and get it paid off as quick as you can. Uh, a lot of people will say, oh, why do you have a loan in your retirement? That's a bad idea. That's the people that want to sell you stock. <laughs> right. Uh, but really, the bottom line is, if you want to have that cash flow coming in and you want it paid for and you got in the game at 57, like I did, you want to pay it down as quick as you can. And that's that's the goal. That's the yeah, goal. It, exactly. It depends on your age and your strategy. Right. I'm 52, so I still have some time. So I could see myself, you know, leveraging. But also, too, when there's an economic downturn, it's nice to have everything paid off so you don't have to worry about covering that mortgage. So right. various there's various strategies. By right. the way, in the chat, uh, there's uh, Scott, and he's giving us his phone number. And if he wants to, he wants to talk to folks about their experience with JWB. So Community, give this guy a call and give him your experience. And Scott, I wrote down your phone number too, because I'm happy to share with information. This is the beauty of our community. We share information with each other. We are friends. And may I even dare say it, we are lifelong friends because we are part of this community and we're all in this together. And 
isn't it cool to like birds of a feather flock together and we're all in this race winning together. No one's left behind in this race, by the way. We're all pulling each other forward. So as the ocean rises, all boats rise. Exactly. That's what they say, right? And Eddie Harris from Hotlanta wants to know how much our increases in insurance premiums have hurt our monthly cash flows. Eddie, here's my take on it. Being in California with everything being expensive, everything I see in Jacksonville is still cheap, including insurance. Sorry, it's just cheap compared to where I live. So it doesn't bother me one bit. How about you, Lee? Yeah, I, I kind of mentioned in the chat that if there, I mean, once once I had that cash out refinance, I had $250 a month extra from those houses. It went from $80 to $250 a month cash flow. And so it enabled me to not really erode my principal and my um, my surplus that I needed to have in my retirement account to pay for in case stuff happens uh, and still allow me to pay down the using the C3X. So yeah, I didn't see much of a bump, you know, but I had five new houses. So oh, there you go. 2019. So I didn't have any remodel houses, but that was my buying criteria. Nice, nice. Okay, so Tamara, she wants to know, can I repeat my journal entries? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So I have three things that I focus on when I'm writing in my appreciation journal. The very first one is five things I appreciate. So I'll usually talk about five things that happened that day that I appreciate that it happened. Like, for example, yesterday I went swimming, so I... I I, I appreciate that I have the opportunity to go swimming at Montage Wellness Center and I was able to swim 100 in laps. In a pool or in the ocean? In a pool. The ocean here is too cold. It's like too 55 cold. degrees. No, thank you. I have to get, <laughs> I have to have lots of neoprene when I'm diving. So no, I don't recreationally swim unless I feel like getting a real cold shock, but I do love kayaking. But yeah, I, I appreciate that I went for a swim. And then I had a surprise visit from a, a gentleman that I call Daddy Trang. My mother has met him. He's a former coworker of mine. Uh, Trang is, Trang Tran is from Vietnam and he and I worked together back in 1980, 1990 and he was the chairman of the board because not because he was truly the chairman of the board he just fixed all the chairs in the office so we called him the chairman of the board and I was the plant manager I was the plant manager because I watered all the plants so uh, it was that kind of startup and uh, he paid a, he paid a little visit so I had a little little visit with him and had lunch with him and he's 83 now so it was like oh just good catching up with him so I wrote about him in my journal and I also wrote about how, like, I love my Rockstar squad. I own Rockstar Marketing and my squad, my team, my, my staff, they are amazing. I call them my Rockstar squad and they are all amazing human beings. And I'm always appreciative of them. And I also wrote that I'm super appreciative that I get to be a host today with Lee Bishop, the MVP on this amazing show. And then I also write down my money miracles. So money miracles. So what are those? So whenever I find a penny on the sidewalk, I write about it. Whenever Trang and Kathy, his wife, give me, treat me to lunch, that's a money miracle. It's something I didn't have to spend. Or I received a check from a client today or whatever. So that's what I record in the money miracles. And then the third thing I write about is what do I want to do next? And then, so I usually have some kind of action item. And so I have it on my to-do list to continue working on chapter one of my women's social progress over the last 200 years, this book that I'm writing. So like there's, and, and sometimes it's like work on this thing or, or do sit-ups in the morning or be sure to get enough sleep or, you know, it, it, I don't know what your things are going to be, but I'm sharing examples with you because I think it's really important for me for my own mental health, but then also to like to show how far I've come and where I'm going, um, because I can look back a year ago and go, hey, I was taking the real estate exam the same day as today, a year ago. And wow, how time flies, because here's the scoop. I often, because I'm on social media all the time, I'm comparing myself with all those other people and you always see their A shots and their A reels and everybody's so successful. And I'm like, I'm such a loser. I haven't accomplished much. Bullshit. <laughs> we, we have all accomplished a lot. We all have, we just forget that we've accomplished a lot right. because we're doing so much. So everyone pat yourself on the back for being here right. and accomplishing a lot. So another question is, uh, Jen and Lee, have you seen any issues with tenants as far as maintaining the residence, question mark, 
paying on time, question mark, and so on. So I haven't seen any issues with late payment. I, I actually did at one time have a tenant that would constantly pay on like the 14th when he got paid and it was due on the first. And every time I would get a, a letter from JW, an email from JWB saying the tenant paid on the first and a tenant paid on the 14th. And I finally called my portfolio manager said, what the heck is going on? This guy's not paying twice. And they said, yeah, he's paying and it's bouncing on the first one. So he's getting a $50 charge from JWB and he's getting a hundred dollar charge from the bank for bouncing the check. And I said, don't you guys have a program? And they said, yeah, we do. We have an insurance program that we have with it. If this guy wants to pay $20 up front, then the insurance company will pay his rent and then he pays into it on the 14th when he has the money and he doesn't get hit with these extra overages and stuff like that. So it's really JWB came up with a solution. JWB provided this guy, kept him from having the default every time and, and having his credit look like crap. And so that was just another one of those value adds that they came up with to fix this guy's problem. So did I see a problem? No, I didn't see a problem, but this guy saw a problem, you know, because I got paid. And the way the insurance worked was if you, if he missed a payment after that, then they took him out of it and he couldn't be in and he would get delayed payments again. So if you want more information about that, you know, talk with, uh, chat with JWB and, and, or your portfolio manager about, you know, what other insurance things that they came up with that, uh, works for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And to, to piggyback on that, so asking if somebody's had a hard time paying, you know, I will say that my tenant that's been with me for eight years before COVID, she uh, was habitually having a hard time making the entire payment. So she would make partial payments. And so JWB worked with her really hard on getting a, a plan together. And so she, a single mom, you know, going through some challenges, I know. But fascinatingly, since COVID started, and ever since, she's never been late. So I think that JWB is a, does an exceptional job of, of connecting people with different programs if they're having challenges making their rent and, and short on cash. But it has been amazing because you would think that she would have had no problem paying her full rent before COVID and then having issues on the back end. But it's been the reverse. So kudos to the team at JWB because... Honestly, I had no problems with collecting rent and I've never had to deal with an eviction because of that. So, and then Tara Paget has a question. How has all your experience been with maintenance expenses? Has your cash flow been put right back into the property or has been, has maintenance been low? Lee, do you, since you have new properties, you hardly have any maintenance, correct? Yeah, I just said, I, I had an issue where some insects got in and ate a power line to the water pump to the well. And they, JWB remediated that, replaced the, the power, and, and they sent me the, the invoice and everything. But maintenance has been negligent in all five of my properties. I, you know, I had that $400 that for incidental maintenance things that everybody has for each house um, in their account. And very rarely has it been tapped into over the couple of years that I've owned these houses. But when it when it is over that four hundred dollar mark, they do call me and say, "Hey, we got some issue," and, and it's been pretty cool. Yeah, that's um, cool. It's worked. I haven't seen it affect my cash flow. No. And I have only older properties that have all been remodeled. But until I would say I haven't had much maintenance issue. The only time I've really had maintenance issues on Barmer Drive when I had a, a tenant who I would suspect had probably never really cooked for himself before and poured hot grease repeatedly down the drain. And that caused some that caused some plumbing issues. But that wasn't JWB's fault. That was the tenant's fault. Right. You know. And then once it's a tenant's fault, what do they do? They turn it into rent, right? Yeah. It has to be billed back to them. Yeah. It's not a maintenance fee to the tenant. It's a, right. It turns into rent. So I love that, that, you know, even if the tenant moves out, they still owe that money, you know, not to say that I want my tenants to move out, but if it does, you're still covered, which I think is pretty cool the way they have that worked out. Yeah. That answers well, all the questions that we have out there. Though. I think so. 
Now, there are a couple of things. Uh, first off, I see that Miguel and Mel are fabulous uh, current friend in Granada. He's on here. It's so great to see you, buddy. I'm sorry that I won't be able to see you when I'm in Spain because you're going to be in Korea, but I am staying at the places that you recommended, buddy. Thank you for that. Um, Pablo is actually on his way to his family vacation in Spain. Sorry, my gal in hell. I don't think he's going to have time to see you. I think he's doing a cruise. But anyway, Pablo let us know that he is going to be traveling around these fabulous United States and he gave us some dates. So guys, if you don't want to like connect with Pablo while he's traveling, check this out. Pablo is going to be in Denver on August 19th. So all you Denver peeps, Leslie, Billy Green, Carl Thompson, like all those folks, if you want to send Madison an email or send a, in this chat. The other thing is that Pablo is going to be in New York City on September 21st. So if you are in the New York City area, the New Jersey area, and you want to see Pablo, again, send Madison your email if you want to meet up with Pablo. Because here's the deal. I'm not traveling as much because I'm not going back and forth with work travel as much as I was. So I'm not hosting as many meetups unless you're here with me locally, right? But I totally encourage you guys. Nadine, you can totally do it for the Seattle area. Drew Barnhill can do it for, and, and Tony D, you guys can do it for Florida. Kelly, I mean, like, like there's different contingents. Let's have our own little parties. If you can't join me for all my craziness with my little magic wand here, do your own thing because we're friends, like connect, hang out, and then take pictures of it so we can all have FOMO and be jealous that we weren't there. Don't be jelly. Right. <laughs> but Jen, I thought it was a great show, huh? You did a great job. We held on and people stayed till the end. We love you guys. Everybody, thank you so much. Truly, I hope that this was not too crazy. Yes, we didn't really talk about a property of the week, though. I will be put off until next week. But uh, truly, we're so happy that you guys are here. We love you truly. And before we do the don't be average, let's actually give everybody a, a wish, right? Okay. I don't think you guys can hear the ding because um, nobody does. Because it, cancel, it cancels out. <laughs> I'll say ding. <laughs> but we're going to say ding. 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 <laughs> May all of your real estate wishes come true. And Lee, what should we not do? We should not be average. See ya. Love Thank you. Thank you, everybody.